Hi, welcome back to the Photoshop Training Channel.com. I'm Jesus Ramirez. In this video, I'm going to show you how to expand and bend a building in Photoshop. You're going to learn a lot of new techniques, so stick around to the very end. To extend the building, you're probably thinking that we're going to use the clone tool, but we're not. We're instead going to use a technique that utilizes the mixer brush. Then we're going to bend the building with the Puppet Warp tool. Okay, let's get started. This is the photo that we're going to work with. You can follow along with you like with a free watermark version from Adobe Stock. You can, of course, license the image if you like or use your own photo. The most important thing is that you learn the technique. So what we want to do in this tutorial is take this building here on the left and expand it and bend it over the city. And the first step is to figure out how we're going to expand the building. There are several different ways in which you can do so, but I'm going to show you a technique that I think you'll enjoy. So first, I'm going to press the Z key on the keyboard to zoom into this building. And we got to figure out what we want to duplicate. So on your image, look for repeatable patterns. In this case, the windows are repeatable patterns. So that's what I'm going to focus on. And if you zoom in, you can see that the windows have a highlight and then a shadow. So that's really what I'm going to be looking at when deciding what to duplicate. So I'm going to zoom out and I'm going to hold the space bar, click and drag to pan up. Then I'm going to select the rectangular marquee tool and I'm going to click on the edge of the building and drag to the other side. Then with the space bar, you can click and drag the selection as you create it. So I'll drag up and place the top edge of the selection just past the shadow so that the shadow is inside of the selection. And I'll place the bottom edge right over the shadow so that the highlight is inside the selection. And I'm just going to duplicate the pixels within this part of the selection. And I'll explain in a moment why I'm doing this. So with this part of the building selected, I'm going to press Control J on Windows, Command J on the Mac to duplicate these pixels. And the reason that I used this shadow in the highlight was because you can find those shadows and those highlights on all the windows. So I figured that would be a good reference point. So you can see the highlights and shadows above all the windows. And when I select the move tool, I can hold Alt on Windows, Option on the Mac, and click and drag up to duplicate. And you can see how I'm just duplicating the windows and making the building taller. Unfortunately, this is not the most efficient way of expanding a building, so I'm going to undo that. For those of you who are more advanced, you might consider using the transformation and duplication technique. And although it would work, it's not ideal for this. Actually, now that I brought it up, let me show you how that technique works. First, select your layer, then press Ctrl J on Windows, Command J on the Mac to duplicate the layer. Then you can load that layer as a selection by pressing Ctrl on Windows, Command on the Mac, and clicking on the layer thumbnail to load that layer as a selection. Then you can press Ctrl T on Windows, Command T on the Mac, and tap on the up arrow key on the keyboard to move the layer up and just stop until you reach the edge. If you go over, no problem, just tap the down arrow key to go back down. Then click on the check mark to commit the changes. Photoshop will remember this last transformation and you can keep repeating it and duplicating it on the same layer by using a keyboard shortcut. Control Alt Shift T on Windows, Command Option Shift T on the Mac. Notice that as I continue to press that keyboard shortcut, it expands my building and that works pretty well actually. The downside is that it requires a lot of steps and you have to keep pressing that keyboard shortcut to make the building taller. So instead, I'm going to show you a technique that is more efficient and that will help you in many different types of projects. First, I'll delete this layer by dragging it into the trash icon so that I only work with the original layer we created. And what I'm going to do is zoom into it so that we can clearly see it. And I'm using the spacebar to pan as I zoom in. And the tool that I'm going to show you is the mixer brush tool. There's a couple settings you have to remember. First, Make sure that under this drop down, you uncheck load solid colors only. You enable this box and make sure that you have any of the dry settings. So dry heavy load will work. You don't want to have a wet brush because that will mix your colors and you don't want to do that. If you want to know more about how these settings work, then check out my tutorial on turning your photo into an oil painting. I'll place a link right below in the description. For now, I'm just going to keep a dry brush. 
And finally, make sure that you uncheck Sample All Layers. Then you can hold Alt on Windows, Option on the Mac, and when you see the crosshair icon, you can click to sample the pixels that we're going to copy. And when I paint, you can see that I'm duplicating those pixels. But this is really not looking much like a building. And that's because of the spacing of the brush. So we need to change the settings. To change the brush settings, you can click on this icon. This panel opens up. Then drag the spacing slider to the left to about 10%. And then paint and see how that works. Looks like the spacing is still a bit much, so I'll reduce it down to 5%. And I'll create a new layer just so that we can have a clean layer to work with. And I'll continue to paint, and that's much better. And I'll reduce it by 1%. And I'll click and drag to paint, and that looks more like a building. So what I'm going to do now is just create yet one more layer, enable my background layer, Double click on the hand tool to fit the image to screen. And just so that things are not too confusing, I'm going to delete these extra layers because we don't need them anymore. So now with this layer number four selected, I can select the mixer brush, hold the shift, click and drag up to paint your building. Be careful when you paint. Do not resize your brush. If you resize your brush, you will also change the scale of the building and you probably don't want to do that. Next, select the Move tool and click and drag the building and place it over the original building. What I'm going to do now is select the Crop tool and I'm just going to click and drag up to expand my canvas. I'll click on the check mark to commit the changes. And I don't really want a taller image, but we're just going to expand the canvas so that we can do our work. And when we're done, we're going to crop it again. I just want to be able to see the top of the building because that's what we're going to work on next. So what I'm going to do now is disable the building layer from the layers panel. And I'm going to duplicate the pixels that make up the top of the building. So I'll select the rectangular marquee tool, click and drag to select the top of the building like so. Select the background, press Ctrl J, Command J on the Mac to duplicate. And you can see that I only have the tip of the building. And I'm just going to place that on top here. And I'm just going to select the layer and drag up and I'll use the arrow keys on the keyboard to nudge it and try to figure out where I'm going to place this so that it looks like it really belongs there on top of that building. So I'm thinking that maybe somewhere right around here will work. And now I just got to worry about masking the top. So I'll zoom in and I can create my mask. I'm going to select the polygonal lasso tool and I'm going to make a very rough selection. I'm going to go quickly here. But in your project, make sure that you take your time and get a better selection. But even with this rough selection, you'll see that the effect is going to look very convincing. So let me quickly just make a selection here. With my selection active, I can click on the layer mask icon to make a layer mask, which hides those pixels. I'll double click on the hand tool and you can see what I have here. Now with these two layers, which is the top of the building and then the building itself. I can select both by holding shift, clicking on both. You can see they're both highlighted. Then right click and select convert into smart object because I want to treat them as a single layer. I'm going to make transformations and I want these transformations to be non-destructive. If I need to make an edit to maybe the mask, for example, I can double click on the smart object. It opens up in a new tab and you can make your adjustments here. When you're done, you can just close the tab and Photoshop will ask you if you want to save. Just click on yes and the changes will be automatically updated on your working document. What I'm going to do now is place my building into position. So here's the building. It's called top. It took the name of one of the layers in the smart object. I'll just rename it to building. Then with the move tool, I'm going to just place it into position and I'm just going to place it right here so that it covers the trees. And I'm going to worry about this in a moment. I want my extension to not really be an extension. I actually want it to be the whole building so that I can control it any way that I want. What I'm going to do now is create the bend. We're working with a smart object. That's what this icon indicates. So that means that I can apply transformations non-destructively, which means that I can edit them at any time. One of the transformations that I could apply is the pupper warp found under edit pupper warp. By default, you'll see a mesh. I don't like using the mesh. I feel that it's a bit distracting. So I just always disable it from my options bar. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create these pins. So I'll create two just to show you. So I have a pin at the bottom and a pin on top. 
and I can click and drag these pins to distort those pixels. So what I'm going to do is right click and delete this pin because I don't really want that one there. What I'll do here at the bottom is just create several pins to pin the building down so that these pixels here at the bottom really don't distort, only the ones on top. So I'm going to create another pin here and I'm going to click and drag the building over to the right. Notice how the building is bending to the right, but as soon as we get to the top, there's a slight curve going up. So it's creating sort of like an S and I really don't want that. To fix that, with this top pin selected, I'm going to hold Alt on Windows, Option on the Mac, and you'll see this circle. And I'll zoom in so that you can see it. You see that circle there? If I hold Alt, it appears. And if I let go of Alt, it disappears. So what you want to do is with this pin selected, just click and drag that to the right just to create a much nicer curve. See that? See how we have a much nicer curve now? And you can continue adjusting the building accordingly. When you find a distortion that you like, you can click on the check mark to commit the changes. And this looks much, much better. What I'm going to do now is work on the background. And the reason that we want to work on the background is because we can see part of the original building. So let me just collapse this to have a little more room to work with. I'll disable the layer so that we can see the background layer. I'll click on the background and create a new layer. And we're going to use the clone stamp tool for that. Make sure that under sample, you select current and below because I'm going to enable the top layer and I don't want this layer to affect my cloning. I just want to see what I need to clone out so that I don't spend too much time working on things that I don't need to clone out. So in this case, I basically need to clone out the top left of the original building. So with this blank layer selected, I'll call it clone so that we know what that layer is doing. So clone and then with the clone stamp tool, I'm going to increase the size of my brush so that it's a little bit bigger, maybe increase the hardness just a little bit. And with the Alt key on Windows option in the Mac, I get this target icon and I can click to set a sample source and you can see the preview overlay and just click to paint like so. And I'm just holding Alt to sample and just painting in new areas like so. And the reason that I'm sampling from so many places is so that the pixels look a little more random and a little less like copy and paste. So now that I've hid those pixels, everything looks really, really good. The next thing that I need to worry about is the building here. Obviously, it's on top of all the other pixels and it doesn't look very realistic. So I need to use a mask to hide and conceal pixels. With the building layer selected, I'm going to click on the layer mask icon. Then I'm going to go into the brush tool and I'm going to paint with black using a soft brush. I'll decrease the hardness and maybe make a smaller brush. That way, when I paint, I get a smooth transition. And I don't need to be very precise because the pixels below are essentially the same pixels as the layer above. The only place where you really have to be careful is with the windows. So I'll zoom in. I'll make my brush smaller. And then if I paint with black, I hide pixels. But I don't think that's what I want. I actually want to reveal the pixels. So I'll tap X on the keyboard to swap my foreground and background colors. So now that white is my foreground color, I'll paint over the layer mask to reveal pixels from the building that we generated. You can decide which pixels to show or hide. Just make sure that the blend looks realistic. Then I'm going to double click on the hand tool. And you'll notice that the image is looking much, much better. I'm going to zoom in and I really don't like the way these pixels are bending here. So I'll edit the puppet warp. Click on this down pointing arrow and double click on the puppet warp label that brings up the pins and you can adjust them any way that you want. This is why you want to work with smart objects. They make your adjustments, distortions, filters, and transformations non-destructive, which means you can come back and edit them at any time. But anyway, I think that the problem here is that I created too many pins, so I'll delete a few. You can right click on a pin and select delete pin, and I'll delete this one as well. Then click to commit the changes. And that looks much better. I think the problem now is the layer mask. So let me just click on the layer mask and I'll paint with white to reveal these pixels like so. So just be very careful with the layer mask here. And this looks much, much better. 
And that's such a small part that when you zoom out, you really can't see those imperfections and everything looks really, really good. At this point, all you need to do is select the crop tool, then click and drag the center handle down so that you can crop the image back to its original dimensions. And now we have a building that bends over the city. And if you want to learn more about the Puppet Warp tool and what every option does, then check out this video. I'll place a link in the description. It covers everything that you possibly would want to know about the Puppet Warp tool. Also, if you decide to expand and bend the building, share it on Instagram with the hashtag PTCVids. I would love to see what you come up with. And if this is the first time that you visit the Photoshop training channel, then don't forget to click on that subscribe and notification buttons. Thank you so much for watching. I'll talk to you again in the next video.